Sunrise, Delphina. Hi, Cam. Nicole, Leah. Um, no, just welcome everybody. We're excited to be with you today. I know there'll be a couple of folks jumping on um, momentarily, but um, we're really excited to be here. And we also want to welcome uh, Rebecca Ortega, who is Alicia Ortega's mom. She's the co-director of Native Women Lead. And Rebecca will be starting us off um, with a prayer after Jennifer just kind of shares some background. Yeah, so while we're um, still allowing a few minutes for everybody to go ahead and um, log in and join us, I'm gonna go ahead and go over the agenda, um, a few housekeeping reminders and some community agreements. This will try as hard as we can to keep it within the hour um, and honor everyone's time. So thank you so much for joining us on your lunch hour or whatever time it is where you're at. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and go over some community agreements as we're um, sharing this space. Um, Native Women Lead recognizes that Native women are the backbones of our communities. We are emerging as leaders and entrepreneurs our ideas, community, and culture together and empowering one another to manifest change. Our organization is committed to understanding of the inherent value of women in our community. We believe we can learn from each other and it is this exchange which is critical to our movement. A great mistake. Our work to revolutionize systems requires a dedication to experimentation and fearlessness. We will make mistakes and we will learn and grow from them. We are committed to radical transparency, understanding as an organization that we will work to heal each other and our communities, the decisions we make. We are committed to learning together in, a, in public and will share our reasons for decisions with our stakeholders and relatives. We believe in thinking critically of our work and its impact on our Earth mother and our peoples. We come to the table of Native women leaders equals, dedicated to striving for excellence and holding one another accountable as we co-create. As we deconstruct the Western systems of entrepreneurialism, we strive toward greater inclusion of our relatives, our trans veterans possessing different abilities and come from different backgrounds. With that, um, let me go ahead and welcome Miss Rebecca Ortega, who will lead us in our prayer as we get started. Today. Ms. Ortega. Good day to everyone. Today, I will be sharing a prayer in my Tewa language, and I invite you to join me to pray in your own way as well. คุณดาวาฮะแนทาดิเมกิคุณดาวาฮะฮาวิตะกิเอวิโฮดิคะเยมาเฮดานัมบิตโอวาดิงคะเยนามิฮีวอกิเมกิวอีอักตูเยฮ
sing Wa Kui Wa at the end. Women, the strong Pueblo women, the strong Native women, the strong Native men that we that we are to move forward. And that's what I said. And thank you with respect to all of you and to all of our ancestors and our creator. Thank you. Hi everybody, I'm Jamie Gloche. I'm a co-founder for Native Women Lead, also a team lead at Roan Horse Consulting here in Tiwa Territory in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I'm a mother of three beautiful and brilliant Indigenous children and a matriarch of the Navajo, White Mountain Apache, and Kiowa Nations. Thank you for joining us for the 2021 Transformation Thursday virtual retreat. As we kick off 2021, I want to acknowledge the incredibly difficult year 2020 has been for us. So many of us have direct experience with loss and hardship as what felt like we went through multiple pandemics. Last year, Native Women Lead found ourselves in a virtual space and we found ourselves carrying multiple initiatives. For this series, we welcomed over 300 attendees, sent out care packages all across the world and sourced products from indigenous makers therefore contributing over $12,000 to Indigenous entrepreneurs. Additionally, we launched our Matriarch Response Loan Fund in partnership with Nusenda Credit Union, lending $150,000 to Indigenous women business owners. This relationship-based loan program also offered 50% loan forgiveness um, with the, the support of Indian Collective, the Interior um, Department of <laughs> Indian Affairs here in New Mexico, as well as Decolonizing Wealth. And, um, we also solidified our partnership with New Mexico Community Capital to create our Circle of Support program, which um, provided those entrepreneurs with access to coaches, mentors, and technical assistance. In solidarity with Family Independence Initiative, we also provided $500 micro grants to over 100 Native families here in New Mexico. In total, Native Women Lead in 2020 invested over $400,000 to Indigenous women entrepreneurs and families. Another space we found ourselves in was working with the Center for Civic Policy and the Native American Voter Alliance Education Project to get out the count and get out the vote because ultimately we believe representation matters. As we continue to look at policy and on the ground solutions, we're continuing to cultivate our relationship with closing the women's wealth gap, a national initiative that seeks to transform public policy and systems to advance gender economic equity and close the racial wealth gap that exists for everyone. We also hope to continue to have cross-cultural, cross-border collaborations with First Nations matriarchs, organizations in Canada, as we know this work intersects in multiple ways to support entrepreneurs, uplifting women, women of color, and advocacy for economic and social justice, plus access to opportunity to not just survive, but to thrive collectively. Today, as we recognize the change of leadership in the, in the United States with President Joe Biden, our first ever woman of color, Kamala Harris, we see our very own Congresswoman Deb Holland get nominated as the first Indigenous person as the next Secretary of Interior. All this to say, we've been pressed to grow, to endure, and to move toward action while trying to hold our loved ones and communities, socially distanced, of course, close. As we look to the new year, Native Women Lead is embarking on a number of initiatives and dreams. First, we welcome our first ever co-director, Alicia Ortega, and tomorrow we will meet with our first ever board of directors a bunch of incredibly badass Native women matriarchs to structure as a C3, a nonprofit organization. Next, we'll begin planning for the Matriarch Loan Fund 2.0. And we have an audacious, radically unapologetic goal of raising $10 million to fund and support Native women entrepreneurs to grow their businesses. All this work has been co-founder led with a grassroots approach that centers Indigenous women. None of this could have been done without you or the network and the amazing Indigenous women we get to witness and uplift as they keep sight of their North Star. The 2021 Transformation Thursday series will be a free offer offering to our community, primarily up uplifting Indigenous women and women of color, so that you may find inspiration, motivation, and knowledge to continue your self-determined path. It is our intention that this space be safe, brave, and inclusive for us, so that we can manifest the future where our families and communities are cared for, through the creation and realization of our dreams, through intentional advocacy, skill building, and community and connection. It is with excitement and gratitude that I get to announce the dynamic partnership with virtual gurus. And 
we get to take part in transforming the Indigenous workforce and increase access to opportunity for Indigenous women. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to hand it over to Vanessa to welcome innovative Indigenous matriarch Bobby Reset. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Um, if anyone is comfortable turning on your cameras, I just want to do a big clap because this has been the world's hardest year and we're here for everybody. So hi, hi, hi. We miss you guys being in person. We miss seeing your faces. So this is our virtual hug to you. And we're so excited to be kicking this off with someone we have so much esteem for um, through the relationships and networks we've been able to meet, uh, Bobby Reset. And so let me begin. Uh, she is the founder and CEO of Virtual Groove a talent as a service solution platform that matches its users with the perfect North American remote assistance. Um, she recently launched Ask Betty, a Slack app that gives users instant access to an affordable personal assistant for small administrative and personal concierge type tasks. Named both Canada's Indigenous Entrepreneur of the Year and Women Entrepreneur of the Year in 2019 by Startup Canada, Bobby is an unstoppable force in the Canadian startup community. She is Cree Mati, a woman who provides, who prides herself on building an inclusivity first company, championing for indigenous people and the LGBTQ plus community. She's a natural leader, sharing her passion by mentoring First Nations youth who have demonstrated interest in tech and business. Uh, she's also, Forbes announced that Virtual Grooves as being one of the top 19 innovative tech startups to watch. Uh, Bobby's company works with clients who are Fortune 500 executives, startup entrepreneurs, and small business owners. Like me, we use the virtual assistants. Um, when she's not busy leading a team of over 300 people and thinking of innovative ways to grow her startup, Bobby enjoys brainstorming new approaches to a positive social impact in the Indigenous community. And I can't say more, <laughs> so I'm just going to hand it over to Bobby herself. Um, and thank you so much for joining us today. Bobby. Thank you, Vanessa, and uh, hi, everyone. And uh, I want to start by saying thank you so much for the prayer, Rebecca uh, Migwich. That was uh, wonderful, and it's always wonderful to be able to come to an event and, and have a prayer. So uh, I really appreciate that, and thank you. Uh, I do also want to acknowledge that uh, myself, I am speaking from Treaty 7 territory, and uh, this is very important uh, for, for us here uh, to be able to acknowledge that we are on Treaty 7 land. And I know a lot of you are on a uh, different lens, so I really like the fact that we all acknowledge that. So thank you again for that. I, I'm really, really uh, happy to have been asked by Native Women League to speak um, a little bit about my story. I do wanna talk a little bit more about the story of what led up to the success. And then I will go into a little bit more about uh, bootstrapping the company to 1.3 million before I closed a funding round and how I did that and how I started the business. Uh, and then from there, I would like to go into some Q&A. So definitely save your questions, put them in through the chat. And if you have any questions, uh, you know, definitely I, I, this is my favorite part of any kind of talking is uh, answering any questions and, and supporting people. Uh, you will see a few of our virtual gurus staff on the call as well. Uh, feel free to reach out to them if you would like. And uh, so we'll just get started. And I do wanna say that I'm kind of more of a non-traditional speaker I, I tend to ramble, so uh, you know I apologize ahead of time uh, for that. But it's just kind of I, I do that better than than speaking to a, a script or anything. So I'm going to start by going into uh, who I am. Uh, so I'm Bobby, the founder and CEO of Virtual Gurus. Uh, so I'm a Cree Métis woman from Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada, and uh, I grew up in a very non-traditional family, which uh, I'll get into in a moment. Uh, and I always worked for other people, whether it be as a sales director, uh, whether it be as I was working in oil and gas in oil and gas industry, uh, as a high angle rescue technician. Uh, and I, I always kind of worked my way up to things. I would start at the bottom and kind of work my way up and it was just who I was. And I uh, came from a family, a non-traditional family. Uh, so this is my mom. Uh, her name is Lorna, and uh, she's raised me and my brother, and this happens to be the love of her life, who is my other mom. And so we were raised in, in this is LGBTQ family uh, in the 70s, late 70s, and uh, 
you know, we, we non-traditional, my mom took us off of the reserve and she's from a reserve called Pie Pot Indian Reservation outside of Regina, Saskatchewan. Um, she really wanted to move to the city and, and raise us in a way where we were able to um, take care of ourselves and really kind of learn what we needed to learn. And uh, she, she really struggled with finding work herself back in the day and she became an entrepreneur. And she was actually the first woman indigenous house builder in Saskatchewan. And so there's a lot of photos online of her sitting on top of houses, hammering the nails into houses without any uh, things tying her in for safety, nothing. And she was such a hard worker. So I think that's where we get it from. Um, my other mom is, uh, has been with her now for over 40 years. And uh, so this is us now. And uh, we're, we're just a nice little cute non-traditional family, the four of us. And my brother has uh, six kids. So I always tell them, I don't need to have my own children because you've had them all for us. So uh, thank you for that. And uh, I, I love that I have six nieces and nephews and uh, my parents are still together to this day. And uh, they raise, uh, they help my brother raise his kids now. Um, so I like to tell this little story about my upbringing. Um, as you can probably see from some photos online of me, I have a lot of tattoos on my arms. Um, I had struggled with a skin condition and it's actually a skin disease that's on the side of the cancer side called polymorphous light eruption. I actually couldn't go out into the sun at all. And a lot of this is because of my native blood of the dark deep red blood that we have. And uh, so I couldn't touch the ultraviolet lights. I couldn't touch lights. So I was also known as a bubble baby, which means I had to be in this thing pretty much any time I went outside. So it would protect my skin. Um, and th this is a huge part of who I am today because I really struggled with um, talking to people. I actually became a loner. I, it was really scary because I actually didn't go to school from grade two until grade, I think it was grade 10. And uh, I couldn't go to school because I couldn't touch the camera. And so I became kind of a recluse. I became really shy, couldn't talk to people. So when you think about that, and then you think about where I'm at today, it's, it's kind of been a little bit scary for me. And uh, one thing that I'll tell you about is, is there's a, I had a demo day. So when you're in a startup, you have what we call a demo day at an accelerator. And that day, five minutes before I was to go on stage, I choked and I said, no, I'm not gonna do this. I don't like the way I feel. Um, I didn't like it. I, I just couldn't do it. So I backed away and five minutes before going on stage, they had to pull in another, speaker to come on stage and do it. Um, so this really explains kind of why I've struggled with public speaking. Um, but I do know that in order for me to move forward with virtual gurus into a scaled virtual gurus, I had to get over that fear. And that's one of the most important things about being a business owner is you have to, you have to hit fear head on and not be afraid of, of what's going to happen because really you're kind of your own worst critic. And so that's something that I've kind of learned over the time of uh, where I'm at today. And I still struggle with public speaking. I still struggle with it, um, but I mean, I'm getting a lot better with it. So I'm gonna go into what virtual gurus is. I'm gonna start by saying that you are getting a sneak peek. Uh, so nobody else has seen this of what our new refreshed brand logo is. Um, so right there under the sneak peek, virtual gurus is, uh, we are rebranding and refreshing it. I wouldn't say rebranding, we're just refreshing the brand. Um, because it's been the same logo since we started and uh, we really do need to express in the brand about what it is about us. And the one thing about virtual gurus is our North Star. So at the top of that virtual gurus, you'll see the star and that represents our North Star. Our North Star are our people. And I'll explain that a little bit later on as well. But uh, you are getting a sneak peek at the logo. So it's, it's pretty neat to share that. Um, so virtual gurus is what we call a two-sided marketplace platform. What we do is we provide virtual assistances to businesses and entrepreneurs of all sizes, but we don't just provide virtual assistance. We take a much more deeper approach to it and uh, we take a social impact approach to it. So we hire only marginalized folks that provide the services. Um, and I wouldn't say only marginalized folks because that's not true, but we do hire the majority of our contractors are marginalized folks, whether they're indigenous, native, um, to uh, people, the landed immigrants, to LGBTQ people, to people who are transitioning genders and just they can't find work right now, um, to a lot of single stay at home moms who are just trying to make ends meet, to students who are just trying to put food on their table while they're trying to learn. We have 
really opened up the platform to providing work to those people. And the reason being is because I'm a marginalized folk and I've always struggled with finding work. So it was very important to me to be able to do that myself. Um, so what happens is people come through our virtual assistant marketplace and they can select the virtual assistant and then they can check out from there. And the goal is that we're doing algorithmic matchmaking. So essentially we're like a matchmaking um, in the dating, but we're more matchmaking the administration with the clients. And then they go into working through our platform and it's an ongoing monthly reoccurring subscription model. So every month they're just automatically billed. So that kind of takes us into the MRR model, which I'll also touch on a little bit here in a moment. Um, so with that, we needed to make sure that we were training our gurus to be successful. And we realized that we want to set people up for success because their success is our success. But we love training. We love education. It's, it's just who we are. Uh, so we've created Virtual Gurus Academy, and that is our old logo. Um, and Virtual Gurus Academy has courses that are like uh, WordPress fundamentals to um, you know, anything to do with administration back in support. So there's social media courses in there. There are Canva design courses, SEO courses, everything you need to know to not only run your business, but also to help somebody run their business as their back office support person. And uh, we will be providing um, some discount codes here too as well, uh, if any of you feel like you wanna take some of the courses sometime. And then we realized that uh, virtual gurus, clients were coming through and saying, you know, I don't necessarily need an ongoing full-time assistant or an ongoing assistant at all. I just need some by the tasks. And uh, we started realizing that we needed to really focus on providing task on demand services. So we created Ask Betty. Ask Betty, uh, pardon my friend, she gets shit done. And uh, so Ask Betty works in 15 minute increments. So let's say if you just need somebody to book your hair appointment, you can say, hey, Betty, and Betty's gonna say, hey, Jamie, how can I help you? And uh, you're gonna say, you know what, can you call here and uh, book my hair appointment and uh, set it all up for me, put it in my calendar? Ask Betty, we'll say, absolutely, Jamie on it right now. They go and they get it done for you and that's it. You're moving on with your day, clearing up your time so that you can focus on your business and then this way, we can do all that little tiny stuff in the back end for you. Uh, we have a lot of tasks going on there that are, are amazing tasks, a lot of transcription tasks. Uh, you can send anything. Like I have them uh, book and then cancel my dog grooming um, appointments. And there's, there's so many tasks that you can send in there. And in that way is you're paying for a bundle as opposed to a monthly subscription. So it's bundleized, so you are paying for four tasks at a time, eight or 12 tasks at a time. And uh, the good thing about that is all of the people that are in the back end doing those tasks, you don't know who they are. They're all Betty. Every single one of them are Betty. Um, and so they can just turn on their little timer when they're ready to start working, and then they can take a bunch of tasks and turn themselves off. And uh, it's a really neat platform, and we are always looking for Betty taskers as well. And so that is actually fully launching here pretty shortly. Uh, it's open now, you can download it on Slack now, but uh, it is actually, we're going through the full card launch this coming week, I believe. So that's the whole virtual gurus marketplace. And that the whole virtual gurus marketplace right now is uh, our annual recurring revenue is just about 2.7 million. And uh, we are climbing right now about 100% year over growth. And we are building it into basically the largest market for virtual assistant and back office support, but only by providing work to marginalized folks. So a lot of people ask me when I started Virtual Gurus, how, where did I start? And you know that's honestly a really good question because I was I was like a chicken with his head cut off because I had no idea where I was going to start. Um, you know it it was a, a rocky and it was a roller coaster and it was a really difficult start. So um, I will go into a brief uh, synopsis of where we started and how it kind of came to be, but I, I can honestly say I had an unexpected start. Um, I don't know if you guys have Kijiji out there, but I think it's more of like Craigslist for, for you. But basically I posted an ad on Craigslist saying, I've started this virtual assistant business. I'm the virtual assistant myself, and I know it has the uh, <laughs> potential to go big and I'm looking for somebody to be the CEO of it. 
And I ended up bringing on somebody who became the CEO of the company, and I ended up giving up quite a bit of my shares. And so that was mistake number one. Um, however, I learned a lot from it. And, uh, you know, honestly, I, I think that if I didn't do that, I don't know if we would be here today with how successful it is. So in retrospect, it was a really good mistake to make, I guess. Um, so it was an unexpected start. Uh, the next thing that I, I did that really helped me start exploding the company was leveraging community support. So community support systems, exactly like Native Women Lead, um, your local startup community, uh, local um, accelerators, these communities and these programs help more than anything. I really leveraged mine out here in Calgary, who uh, I leveraged Startup Calgary and Calgary Economic Development probably the most. But then I started going to a lot of accelerators. I started traveling a lot um, and really leveraging the communities in the different areas to get myself out there. Now you can imagine being somebody who is deathly afraid of public speaking, having to do that. So it was a little bit of a scary experience, but I realized that if I wanted to move virtual groups forward, I, I really had no choice. Um, I, I found a couple books that really helped me through the startup process. And I strongly recommend you write these down. Um, if you are starting a business or you do have a business, uh, these, these books will help anybody. And you don't necessarily have to be a tech startup for these books to make sense. Any company should be reading these books. Uh, the Lean Startup really helped uh, build, like when you first start your company, you, you have to build it as lean as possible because you have no money, right? And so you, you have to build it as lean as possible and really manage your burn rate and really kind of manage, you, you, you most likely can't even pay yourself when you first start a business. So this book really helps you figure that all out. Uh, and it's, it's by far one of my favorite books. Uh, the next is The $100 Startup. When I started Virtual Gurus, I had literally $300 in my pocket. Um, I, the Bank of Mom was running out. My employment insurance ran out. And I really had no money. I didn't even have money to pay my rent. I was borderline homeless. It was a really um, vulnerable situation. And I realized, you know, it's, it's either go for it or not. And uh, this is the book that helped me the most was the $100 startup. And even if you're just starting a flower shop, or you're starting a, you know, a consulting agency, um, strongly recommend reading the $100 startup, because it goes over everything to help you start it on such a shoestring budget, you know. Um, the next is, as, as I realized, I made a mistake uh, when I first uh, started Virtual Brews, but I didn't know what our ICP was, which is our ideal customer profile. Super important to know what the ideal customer profile is because when you start targeting the wrong customer profile, that's where you're signing on the wrong clients and they're not staying on as long as you need and it, it becomes a, a, a logistical nightmare to be honest. Um, but fast forward to now, our ICP has been totally figured out and uh, we sell to small, medium businesses. We are now moving into larger corporations as well. And our ideal customer profile is anybody who is anywhere from a two to 10 business, a two to 10 people in their business uh, for the smaller businesses. And anybody who doesn't necessarily have that back office support, um, it could be real estates, it could be construction companies, and uh, so knowing your ICP is probably one of the more important things to any business. And uh, again, if I would have figured that out at the beginning, it probably would have been a little bit better for me. So I want to go into a little bit about how I took it so far without having any money. So I went from $300 to $1.3 million. And uh, I did that without raising any rounds. Um, I really... I really, it was, it's what we call bootstrapping. Um, so I bootstrapped and basically lived off the capital that we were bringing in to keep building the company. I did not pay myself salary until the second year in, and that salary was very, very small. Um, it was just enough to really get by and pay my rent. So I worked in a coffee shop part-time just to help offset that. And uh, so I bootstrapped it up to 1.3 million and uh, started really focusing on taking the money that was coming in and putting it all back into the business. And so that I wasn't putting that money into myself or anything else. 
Um, now, the problem with doing that is you're, you're building it 100% again on, on kind of a shoestring diet. So you, shoestring budget, sorry. So you can't really spend any money. So you're very limited to what you can do when it comes to marketing, you're limited to uh, whatever you can do and you have to put the money in to just keep scaling the company to grow it so that you're able to start really paying some salaries. So up until January of last year, I only had six staff. And uh, you know, I just started really paying myself um, what I now call like a livable uh, salary. And uh, that's, that's because I basically took it all the way up to the 1.3 million by doing it as budget sense as I could. Um, now, a lot of companies do this, but there are a lot of companies that don't do this. A lot of other companies that don't do this they raise their money right off the, the, the get go. Like they start from the beginning and they raise a ton of money. And uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, I guess, I, things about that that I wouldn't do is because you're giving up so much of your company and the equity of your company right off the beginning that I just don't think that it's worth that. But some people like doing that. For me, I wanted to raise the valuation of virtual brews as much as I could on my own before I raised my funding round. So bootstrapping it to 1.3 million um, I was able to close 1.25 million of my first funding round from uh, our lead in investor who is Raven Indigenous Capital. And they were able to help, uh, I was able to help take that money and scale the company this year. So now this year we went from six employees to 20 employees. And uh, those are our full-time salary operation staff employees. So one of the other things about building the business is that's super important is obviously relationship building. This is one of the hardest things I've struggled with. Um, and this is because, again, of my being shy, being an introvert. And, um, you know, when you're out there raising your funding round, it is a really tough ball to swallow when you need to go and stand up in front of somebody and have a pitch deck and you need to pitch to them why they should give you a million dollars. It's, it is one of the hardest things to do. So, I pitched over 170 times last year. And you know what? Every single one of them said no. And that was one of the hardest things for me to go through because, you know, I had two choices. It was either let it beat me down and let virtual gurus fail or let it pick me up and understand that these are things that I need to get better at. There's criticism that I need to take. There are, uh, you know, what were the reasons for the no's? What were the reasons why people didn't want to invest in something that had the potential to go multi-millions? And, you know, I had to really like swallow that pill and, and figure out why, you know? And you know what it was? It was, I was, I was approaching the wrong investors. I was approaching the wrong investors. I was approaching the cis white males um, from oil and gas agencies that have no idea what we're building here. And explaining it to them is not gonna ever change. And doing that, they're not gonna get it. They're certainly not gonna get it when somebody like me walks into the room with full arm tattoos <laughs> and is like, can you give me a million dollars? You know, um, they're just not gonna get it. And, you know, once I shifted that and I shifted my mindset on what Virtual Brews really was, which is a social impact company. And I started switching to going to impact funds, that's when everything came to fruition. We ended up uh, oversubscribing our funding round. We were only raising 1 million and uh, we ended up oversubscribing because we had so many people in impact funds wanting to get in. So we ended up closing the funding round at 1.25 million. So 250,000 over. And all of that is because of his relationship building with the right investors. So super important to make sure that, um, you know, if you're relationship building, make sure they're the right people. So the other, the last thing that I really want to go into is the key performance indicators. Every business out there has KPIs, and uh, this was super important for us uh, being able to scale. In fact, we're still in scale up mode. We are going to be for years to come, but uh, in order for us to scale, we really needed to figure out these numbers. Um, so these are some of my favorite KPIs. Everybody will get their, their favorite KPIs once you start realizing which KPIs are best for your company. But I can say that every single company has KPIs. Um, these are the most uh, popular and plus my favorite ones, but the sales revenue, 
uh, is referring to the income from all customer purchases. So knowing that off the top of your head is extremely important. Even, even if it's only $5,000 a month or $5,000, be proud of that and, and don't shy away from that because it all matters on the metrics that brings that $5,000 in. Uh, the next is the gross profit and margins. So to calculate that, uh, you take the profit margin of your business, uh, to calculate the profit margin of your business, and then you simply, you multiply the total profit by the 100 and then divide it by your sales. So right now, Virtual Gurus' profit toggles between, um, well, our gross margins toggle between um, 48% and 52%, um, which is okay, but you want your margins to be as high as possible because that's when investors really like you. Um, my favorite is the CAC, which is the customer acquisition cost. So it's the total cost of um, acquiring a client. And so for virtual gurus, we're very highly marketed online. So we have to put into effect the cost that it takes for us to do all our marketing, for our salespeople to do the follow-up calls and, and to do consultations. Um, and so this changes, um, but right now I believe ours is around $400 per client. So it does change depending on your marketing and your budget and how many sales staff you have. And then the last is knowing your income by customer. Um, when you're first starting out, you don't care about this and that's okay. You, you don't need to care about it. In fact, I just started caring about this now, but is knowing your income by customer is super important and, uh, you can pull these all up if you lose, uh, if you use online programs like QuickBooks Online and Xero um, or whatever bookkeeping software you have, you can pull these kind of metrics up and it's super important that you, um, you get comfortable with speaking about these metrics. So, virtual Gurus is, a lot of people say, what makes Virtual Gurus different than all the other companies out there doing this? Because there are a lot of companies out there doing this, especially in the US. In Canada, there's only a few. Um, but what makes us different is our North Star. And uh, our North Star is our people. So these are quite a few of our Indigenous uh, Native women uh, that are working for virtual groups. And uh, we have a couple hundred uh, on ongoing contractors who work in our database. And uh, they are working on active clients now. And, uh, you know, they are the people, they are the reason we're here. And, um, you know, I think it's super important to know your reason. Like, Anybody who starts a business has a reason they're starting it. But knowing your reason is probably one of the most important things because if you don't know your own reason, then, then you're, you're probably doing it for the wrong reasons is what I'm thinking. But um, you know, our reason is, is our North Star, our huge aspect of what Virtual Gurus is. Uh, we have a community of them and, and you know, this is super important to Virtual Gurus. It's just super important to ask Betty. Um, this, is, this is our reason and to be honest, I didn't really put this together until probably about a year and a half ago. So very important, but for me, it, I struggled with this part of, of figuring out what is our reason? What, why is Virtual Gurus what Virtual Gurus is? And it is because we're a North Star. So Virtual Gurus operation team, like I said, has grown from six staff to 20 staff. And because we're all on lockdown out here in Calgary, you can see how we kind of nicely Photoshopped all of their heads in because <laughs> We are on lockdown and we're, we all were sent home. And uh, so some of us there were for the photo shoot and then uh, the rest, all the ones that are photoshopped in are all the new ones that the newest, latest employees that have started. Um, but uh, we are a fun bunch that we laugh, we're loud. I, I allow them to take their dogs to work. We provide lunch and dinners for our well, lunches for them at the office, all healthy lunches like salads. And, you know, we kind of make it like a little mini Google uh, to work and it's uh, it's definitely fun. A lot of people like it. We, we can be loud and, and fun. Uh, our Christmas party was amazing and um, you know we're, we're definitely a diverse bunch which which makes it all the better and that's one of the most important things is making sure that your staff or people who work for you understand your vision, what your value is and, and what is your mission. Um, and, and, and it's super important that anybody that works at Virtual Gurus understands that and, and understands me. Um, so my main motto is be bold, be brave, be you. And uh, I think it's something that all of us follow to this day. We have an amazing partnership with Native Women Lead. Um, and uh, 
you know, I'm extremely happy how they found us, uh, that they found us. And they ended up talking to my sales director and uh, he's like, you got to talk to this team. They're, they're just amazing. And so I'm extremely, extremely happy and proud to be partnered with Native Women Lead. So we have built in a partnership code. If you are looking for uh, you to sign up for the Academy, we have a code there and there will be an email going out about this as well. If you're looking to becoming a virtual guru, uh, there is the information session, which is the link. Um, and if you're interested in hiring a virtual assistant, uh, we also do have a code, which is $100 off for the first month, uh, VA services on anything over 15 hours package. And our, uh, you can use the code and you will get set up with a consultation person who will call you and they'll go over how it works. And uh, you can uh, tell them everything you need and they'll, they'll go over everything. They'll strategize what you really may need. Um, you might only need 15 hours. You might need 20, you might need hundred hours. It depends on what, where your business is at. And um, yeah, so that is coming out in an email, I believe. We have a bunch of questions that were from up top. So let's start there, but I'm pretty sure everyone wants to get into how does this work? So um, Jennifer, handing it off to you. Yeah, thanks, Vanessa. Um, so the first question that we got in the chat was from Sarah Cossey. Did you have any daily routines that helped you keep going? How did you motivate yourself to keep climbing the mountain? You know, there were days that I wanted to throw the towel in and say, I can't do this. <laughs> it was too much. Um, but I, I motivated myself because once you start seeing not only traction, but once you start seeing all your hard work come into play, you start getting a little bit addicted to it. And that's what happened with me. I started seeing clients signing up. I started seeing things come in, like even our agreements that had to be built from scratch. Um, I started seeing, you know, I just started seeing things happening and I started seeing things moving along. And once I started seeing that, my I started more encouraging myself, but I started becoming more encouraged and confident. Uh, I would say it was really, it was a struggle for sure, um, especially for the first year. And, uh, but you have to get over that. And then it does get easier. That's, that's the one thing I do want to say is it does get easier for sure. All right. And the second one um, comes from Jamie and she's asking if you can find equity. So equity into your business is okay. So when you start selling shares of your business, your business relies on the, it's the equity of, of what's in your business. So for virtual gurus, for example, I can only go really on what my example is, but for virtual gurus, we had, um, when I started virtual gurus off by myself, 100% equity was mine, which means I was the full owner of virtual gurus and um, you know, nobody else can get, um, you know, nobody else, it's nobody else's, it's mine. So whatever I do is on me. But when I needed to bring in, for example, the CEO that didn't work out and uh, he took 25% uh, of uh, virtual gurus as equity, 25% shares, which means now my equity drops down. And um, now, because we've got a lot of investors, um, my equity has dropped a lot more, but the valuation of the equity is a lot more because our valuation has climbed. So Virtual Grooves' valuation right now, I just got told yesterday, is actually at 18 million US. Um, so we're still quite a small startup, but we're a little bit more like, I feel like we're still small, but I guess 18 million US is a pretty good amount to be proud of. Um, but uh, 18 million US, so now I own 28% of those shares. Uh, so that's my equity.